in my opinion, the letter S is probably the hardest to write in folk calligraphy. Um, the first way, I'm going to show you two ways. The first way starts again with this, kind of like the R, where we come up above the header line and make a little bit of a loop. And then we're going to finish it with this backward C shape that also has a loop. And finally, the exit stroke. So we're coming up and down, and this loop is similar to the R, where you can leave it open, you can fill it in, or you can add shade to it. Here we're coming down, and then down here. This is up. So we're definitely going to add some shade on this downstroke, and then This little loop will fill in, and this one we have a couple options. And this is going up, so we don't do anything in this section. So to put it all together, we go up and around and make this loop, and then make this backward C shape with another loop, little loop at the end, and the last stroke. So you can add the line for the shade in here, and then you can fill those in if you want. Okay, so if we put this together. Also for this C shape, you want to make it curve out far enough. I probably should have made this a little bit more curved outward. Um, if you make this line too narrow or not curved enough, you can always add the shading on the outside to balance it out a little bit. So we'll go up above the header line and make a little loop. Come out to the right, back in with another loop. Exit, and then we'll add the shade here. And then fill this part in. Fill in this little loop. And then up here, if you want, you can fill that part in. Or you can add some shading on the side. So this is what it would look like if you filled the loop in. If you want, you could just completely get rid of that loop part and instead just make it like a line where you come back down. Alright, so there's a few options for that version. And again, that's the more I guess traditional way of making it. If you want to do a little bit more modern, you can start by entrance stroke that goes above the header line and then just make an S shape how you normally would make an S. And then you can exit by looping back through the letter or exiting the same way as this. And I'll show you what some of the challenges are of this version. So again, we start by going up, and then on the curved part of the S, there are a few options. So this whole line we made by going downward. So you can either add shading on these two parts of the curves, so here and here, and I'll show you that way first. And you'll notice our, f our first challenge when I make this. So, so the reason I stopped right here is because if I'm going to add shading on this section and this section, I want to do it, you can either do it on the outside or the inside. I like to do it on the outside to give it a more like curvy look. And then to finish it, you can go through. So 
Same challenge as the second version of the B and the P, where if you want to go through the letter, but if you want to leave this gap, then you have to do it in two separate strokes. So putting that all together would look something like this. where you're shading the outside of the curves. You could also do it same thing where you make the S shape, but instead, so here we shaded this part of the downstroke and this part of the downstroke, here and here. You could also shade this section. So technically this whole part is going down, but you wouldn't want to just shade the entire curve and this line and the curve. So a different option. So if you made the S shape, come around. And then here is a, a challenge with writing the letter like this if you want to leave the gap because if you want to shade this section of the S then you would have to write these two parts first then you can add your entrance stroke and the loop if you don't want to have this line going through so you could either draw this part, leave a gap, come around and then draw these lines um, and then same thing with finishing off the letter if you want to come back through here. You could also bring this all the way around and cross over the entrance stroke, which I'll show you in this version. If you want to do it like that, kind of cross this back through. And then I'm going to add some shading on this part of the S. So the S is tricky. Um, it's not easy to write. So just experiment, play around with it. I tend to write it kind of like this version. Um, I'm not very good at making it look more like an S like that. <laughs> so, But feel free to try all of those. Okay, in comparison, T is going to look really easy. So we have our base header, and it goes above the header into the ascender. Starts with an entrance stroke, and then we're going to make the same shape that we made for the D, where we start the underturn a little bit higher up. Okay, so this is pretty simple. We just go up, down, up, which means our shade is on this section. And then at the end, we're going to cross through. And we're going to do it in two segments, and you'll be able to see why, if you can't already guess. So we're going to add the shade on the inside of the shape, and then to cross the T, the reason we do it in two segments is so that you can leave that gap. And if you have colored it in already, you can just make a straight line. U is also pretty easy. It's one space tall and we start again with the entrance stroke and then we just have two U shapes next to each other. So up and then down and up, down and up. Okay, putting it all together, we have our entrance stroke, first underturn, second underturn, and then we're going to shade the downstroke on the inside. So 
that they use pretty simple. And the last letter on this page is V. And V is actually only two strokes. The first one is compound curve, and then we have that mini underturn that we've seen a couple times in the letter B and the letter O. Okay, again, we've seen the compound curve several times now, and so now we know to make one of the humps bigger. I usually make the first hump a little wider than the second, so that when I come back in to add the shade, then they become equal. And again, for this part, you can either think of it as making an underturn that's just offset, or you can think of it as adding a little bit of shading to the inside right here and then leaving with an upstroke. So here I'll show if you make the left I'm sorry, if you make the right side a little wider then you can add the shade over here. And fill it in. Okay, so this is just an underturn shape that you're starting a little bit to the left of this line, and then that will become a shade. So a couple options for the S, and then the rest of the letters pretty straightforward.